Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Very excited to be here for our first episode of the new year. I hope you had an amazing new year. I hope that you have been able to do some reflections on last year and thinking ahead for the year ahead. But if you haven't, that's okay. I think that these rules today that I want to provide you with are an amazing place to start if you're even just like starting that process and really wanting to level up your results in the gym this year. So what I want to do with this episode is just make it very fast, short, sharp, quick, to the point. So I've got my 10 rules listed and I'm just going to take you through one to 10 as fast as we can so we can get cracking on leveling up your results this year. Number one is to have a specific intention and or goal as well. So some of you may not have a specific goal, but you you will have an intention. And then having an overall plan that supports that. A really important thing that I want to note here with having this plan that supports either your intention and goal or just intention is I want you to think of your plan as a blueprint. I think a lot of high achieving women get really tripped up because they have their intention, have their goal, and they have their protocols, whether that be training, nutrition, whatever. And they think that if I don't stick to it 100%, there's no point doing it at all. Or if I don't stick to it 100%, I should get really down on myself and beat myself up. I want you to think of your training and nutrition protocols, even lifestyle protocols, as a blueprint and as a guide. And this is something I tell my clients all of the time. Your protocols are a blueprint and we it's so common that we might need to tweak them as we go along. And that's okay. It's to be expected. And that's one of the roles or one of the uh, amazing things about having a coach is that you get that expertise to help you tweak it in the right direction. So yes, it's really important. And the rule number one that I want to I want to hammer home is that you have a specific plan that does support your overall intention and goals, but also understanding that the plan is a blueprint that can be tweaked and that should be tweaked continuously to make sure it's working for you. So we don't want to get too married to this is the one way I should do everything. And if I don't, then it's either not worth it or I'm falling behind or I, you know, I'm a bad person or whatever, right? So have a plan that supports your overall intention and goals, but make sure in your mind, you're seeing it as a blueprint and not as a Bible. Number two, you must track your progress. When we look at the research on motivation, we know that the people who are motivated to continue are those people who can see their progression over time and see that they're actually making progress. You won't be able to see that you're making progress or it won't be as visible to you if you're not having a a method of tracking it. So this can be noting down your weights. It can be taking your photos. It can be taking your measurements, any of those sorts of things. Even scale weight can help. We need some method or multiple methods, I was actually say, of tracking your progress. So something that women make the mistake with all the time, they only choose one method of tracking their progress, which is their scale weight, which just doesn't show you the outcomes of your training, right? It doesn't show you muscle gain. It doesn't show you strength gain. None of those things. We can manipulate scale weight by dehydrating someone, by increasing their sodium and water. It... it Scale weight only works in the context of lots of other metrics. So if you're bothering to spend time going into the gym, track your weights, okay? Track your progression there. Take measurements. Take data in terms of sleep. uh, Take your photos. But definitely make sure you have a system of tracking your progress. I hope you're enjoying the episode so far. I just wanted to take a quick break to let you know how you can work with me. I currently have places available inside the Glam Body Program. And if you don't know what it is, this is my completely personalized programming, nutrition, and education online coaching service that is specifically designed to help women get strong and progress their body composition, whether that means gaining muscle, getting lean, or both. So Glam Body is best suited for two types of women. The first loves training, but you've never had a your programming or nutrition tailored to you. Perhaps you're just doing classes or using apps, but you do want more efficient results and you want to learn more about your body. 
or perhaps you have had some element of assistance before, but you're still struggling with overtraining, under eating, speaking negatively to yourself, and you feel like nothing's enough, and you just want to be able to make physique and performance progress without burning the candle at both ends. So to get your spot, just DM me on Instagram with the heading Glam Body. Or you can fill out the application form that is linked in the show notes below and we can have a chat about whether Glam Body is a good fit for you. With that said, let's get back into the episode. Number three, set short-term goals. These can even be weekly and it can be, I want to perform this number of action steps. So it doesn't have to be, I'm going to get to this weight or I'm going to hit this weight in the gym or whatever. It can be, I'm going to go to the gym three times, or I'm going to sleep for eight hours, four times a week, whatever it might be, but do set short ones. So you might have, okay, in 12 months, I want to be able to squat a hundred kilos. That means in, you know, on a monthly basis, I'm going to have to go to the gym at least four times a week. And then, you know, on a weekly basis, it does mean that I'm going to have to hit those gym sessions and make sure I get my squats in. So like I said, it can be outcome-based, it can be activity-based, but try to give yourself something each week at least to look forward to and make sure you can tick off. Again, this is really going to help feed into that motivation component and show you your progress as you go. But which ties into the next point, point number four, celebrate your wins weekly. So something that a lot of women fail to do is celebrate their progression. Definitely the women I coach there typically focused on beating themselves up, looking at all of the issues, all of the problems, all of the mistakes, every little inch that they weren't perfect. That's where my clients tend to focus. So what we need to do is bring back a more zoomed out look at everything the person is doing and help make sure you can see your wins. Even if they're consist like your one of your wins is consistency, You go to the gym every single week of the year, you know, unless you're sick, you're in the gym. It's still a win just because it's easy for you now and that you can do it. It's still something to look at and to make sure you're continually celebrating. We need this to be fun. You're, you just will not continue for long enough to get amazing progress or, and, or keep it if you're not having fun. Okay. Fun should not be a dirty word. We don't have to be miserable to get amazing results. We shouldn't have to suffer through this. You're going to get better results and you're going to be able to sustain them and you're going to be able to continue to progress if you are having fun. So celebrate those wins, even if they seem small to you because now you're nailing it, still celebrate them. Find the things to celebrate. The next one is potentially for those of you who struggle with consistency, it is making the decision once and for all not to negotiate in your head. Typically, I'm thinking of training sessions. So you're waking up in the morning or you're finished work and you need to go to the gym and you start the negotiation in your head. Will I go? When I go? Can I go on Wednesday and set? Can I do it here? Can I move this around? Can I shuffle this around? What can I do? Just decide when it comes to your training sessions, they're going to be put into your diary and pending emergency or illness, there is not going to be a negotiation on whether you will or you won't go, whether you'll push the date, do it a different time, blah, blah, blah. It's not happening. On Sunday night, you have a look at your week, you allocate your training times, you decide where they are going to be, you decide you will not negotiate on where you've decided that they're going to happen. You will not negotiate on those training times, okay? You're just going to go. So what I found this helped with in my head was typically there would be that back and forth, should I, should I not, when should I go? Having made the decision once and for all, it's I'm just not even going to entertain a negotiation. It doesn't happen. And the more I practiced that and caught myself in the negotiation and said, no, stop, it's not happening. The more I just got up and went like, it's not a choice. It's exactly the same as going to your job. You don't negotiate. Will I go today? Will I not? Will I go? Will I not? You go. It just happens. You know, you need to go, right? There is obviously motivations that help you go to your work, but we want to apply the same principle to training. It is just like work. We just go. There is no negotiation. I'm not even going to bother wasting my time and energy. As soon as you start negotiating in your head, the likelihood that you're going to go starts to diminish. Okay? Don't do that to yourself. Number six, practice. And this is going to be a skill that you can practice daily if you need to. Practice making a decision that is in alignment with your goals 
straight after you've made a poor decision or you've had to make a decision that was outside of your control that didn't align. I'm thinking again of emergencies. You you can't go to the gym because your, your dog needs to go to the vet or something like that, right? The very next decision that's uh, available to you that you can make in alignment with your goals, make it one in alignment. So for example, the emergency vet situation happens, you've got to go, you're out for half a day, you come home, lunchtime is a decision that would impact your goals. You make sure you get your protein in, your fruits and your veggies, veggies in, you hit your carbs, whatever it might be. But it's just a decision that you've made that supports your overall goals. The more that you can practice this, the more that you are going to be able to leave behind all or nothing thinking. And when we zoom out and have a look at all of the decisions you made in favor of your goals across the year that is helping you get towards the goals that you want to achieve, you're going to see a greater buildup of decisions moving you in that direction. Okay. Then if you keep doing this, oh, I'm an all or nothing person. Every time you label yourself as an all or nothing person, you're cheating yourself on the results that you can possibly get because you're really giving yourself an excuse to do nothing. Okay. The really successful people are not doing that. They're not engaging in that behavior. Oftentimes it's because they really love the process. They just love the process. They, they would do it even if no one was watching, even if they're the last person on earth, they're still going to be doing this thing. Okay. So whenever I hear all or nothing, I hear a person who's just excusing themselves of needing to do the work that is going to get the results that they say they want. We're not going to do that. It's okay if you make a mistake or it's okay, of course, if things outside your control happen, that's fine. The very next decision available to you that you can make that can help you take a step towards your goal again, make that, keep practicing. You will stop defining yourself as an all or nothing person. Number seven is to keep your intentions and your goals at the top of mind. So this can be with reminders. It can be with appointments. It can be paying a coach who you have to engage with on a weekly basis. It can be a journal that, you know, the front cover is a picture of your goals. You can write on your bathroom mirror, which is something I've done before. I put pictures on my bathroom mirror and written. So I see it every morning. But we need to make sure we keep your intention at the top of your mind. Again, this is specifically going to be really helpful for those of you who are new to consistency or new to the process. Over time, once this becomes an ingrained habit and it's just like I wake up and I go to the gym, it's just what I do. It's part of my morning routine that takes a while to get there. Until that happens, we need to keep this at the top of your mind so that you can actually remember what you're trying to achieve. It's okay if you don't like, it's totally okay if these things um, fall down the priority list, but that's why we are specifically putting a system in place to keep your goals at the top of your mind. Okay. So you can remember, you can remind yourself, this is something new, but it's something that's very important to me. Okay. Number eight is getting support, whether it's your friends, whether it's your partner, whether it's a coach, whether it's a community online, whatever it is. Get some support. So of course, this is going to help keep it at the top of your mind as well because you'll be interacting with other people um, who know about this or who are engaging in the pursuit of similar goals. But support can be really helpful for when we're facing challenges, when we're not feeling great, maybe when we need a pep talk, uh, when we have questions to help us improve our uh, skills or our techniques or our experience, make it easier or better for us, and even just all around enjoyment. So many of us really love to share things and it can be really fun when you find a community or a single person who you're able to share what you're going through with. Number nine, how about you sign up to something this year? This can really help with like that motivation. It can help make it fun. It can also help stretch you out of your comfort zone. And of course, where we grow the most is stretching ourselves out of our comfort zone. Sometimes it's not the right time. But this could be signing up to a photo shoot if you're primarily a hypertrophy lifter. It could be signing up to a novice powerlifting meet. A lot of people think that they have to be strong, quote unquote, to attend a powerlifting meet. You just need to know how to do the lifts with the um, technique required for a comp day. So as in you need to understand the calls and how that works. You need to be able to make sure you can fail any of those lifts safely. Of course, having the spotters around you know, helps that, but still we want to make sure that if we're lifting maximum weight, we're still going to be able to fail to do that in a safe manner. So you need to be able to do that. 
But other than that, it's totally fine if you are the least strong out of everyone there. It's totally fine if every round, you know, you're up first because you're lifting the least amount of weight. And I also think that going in, if you don't feel like the strongest person, I actually think that that might take some of the pressure off because, you know, you're not fighting for a competitive spot. You're going in there for the experience and to have some fun. So don't be shy with powerlifting competitions. Even if you don't want to necessarily train that way long term, it could just be something fun to do for a season over, you know, three to six month block and see how it is and just get a feel for it. Or even something like, you know, a 10 kilometer race, there's like the, what are they, like the Tough Mudder and those sorts of things as well. Just have a think. So like photo shoots, powerlifting comps, races, whatever. Is there something that you can implement this year that will just increase that fun quotient, but also get you to stretch outside of your comfort zone? Uh, With the photo shoots, of course, uh, if you want to get involved in one, I'm organizing the dates for the next glam body photo shoot. You can just DM me a photo shoot and we can have a chat about that. And of course, I do coach women to powerlifting comps as well. So if that's something you're interested in, you can let me know. And then finally, do you need to do an environment, a relationship or a behavior audit? And who or what is getting in the way of you achieving your goals, okay? Of you undertaking the behaviors that you need to to achieve your goals, okay? So every so often you might need to do a bit of an audit. I like to call this like self-parenting. If you were your own parent, you know, what are the obstacles and patterns that you can see consistently getting in your way? Think environment, think relationship, think in your own head. And is there anything you need to change? So it could be like a group of people. It could be every Friday night we go out for drinks and it just sets off a poor weekend for me. It could be, you know, my my self-talk. I notice around week four of my cycle, everything dips, my body image dips. I start talking horribly to myself. Okay, cool. What can you do in week four of your cycle to help support yourself, whether it's through supplements, whether it's through one of my clients who we haven't had diagnosed, but it's looking like maybe some PMDD. She has done really well with setting up appointments at her gym. So classes, lots of cardio-based classes and even um, some fun, you know, more resistance-based classes just to make sure that she is accountable getting into the gym, but also around other people, which will help lift her mood. We've also helped her with some supplements there. Uh, So really have a think. Number 10 is just doing that self-parenting audit and at intervals that you feel like, you know, you might need them. So whether that's every quarter, whether it's every six months or even just once a year, but just adding those in. So I'm going to briefly go through our 10 again to finish off this podcast. Number one, remember having an overall plan that supports your intentions or goals. Number two, track your progress. Number three, make sure you set uh, short-term goals. Number four, celebrate your wins often. Number five, Decide you will not negotiate on your action steps, specifically training. Number six, practice making decisions as quickly as you can that are in alignment with your goals after previous decisions that were out of alignment, whether that was your choice or not. Number seven, making sure you've got a system in place to keep your intentions at the top of your mind. Number eight, get support. Number nine, sign up to something fun this year. And number 10, do you need to do a self-parenting environment relationship or self-talk audit? So I hope you enjoyed the podcast episode today. Like I said, short and sharp to start off this new year with a bang. As always, if you love the episode, I would really appreciate it if you could share it in your stories, tag me, whatever, even shoot me through a DM and let me know uh, if you're finding these helpful. With that being said, I'll chat to you guys next week.